Hi, this is day eight of my video diary. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about TAR syndrome. I know this whole video diary concept is supposed to be about TAR syndrome, and I got a little bit off the subject of showing my talent to the world and everything. I'm not on here to be discovered per se. I'm on here to teach awareness of this rare disorder that I have. It's crazy because sometimes when I go to the doctor, I have to teach the doctor about me. And that's, that's kind of weird. Because doctors, they go to school, they go to medical school for all these years. And then you have a not so normal person come into your office. And they're like, okay, what's wrong with you? You know, what do you have? It's like, what do you go to school? to school for didn't they teach you this in school no back then in the old days a lot of people was born with a lot of different things and they didn't have the research for everything i was blessed enough to be accepted into the shriners program the shriners hospital is a hospital for Kids who are born different, they treat like scoliosis, burns, um, birth defects that a lot of normal doctors don't know about. And I had all together on my arms, I had three corrective surgeries. My first surgery was both my arms see I, I'm kind of show you the scars a little bit I have one scar right here you can't really see it but it sort of look like a messed up tree I have one scar right here it's kind of like a scraped it wound and my last surgery is the butterfly surgery. So all together, I have three corrective surgeries that the Shriners Hospital did. I was two when I first had my first surgery. Um, I think I was four for my second one. And I was six going on seven for my third. Um, being blessed to go to the Shriners Hospital is a major blessing. Because the way I was born, you would not believe it. But my arms were like this. Like con connected to my shoulders. So, you can just imagine from being born as a baby to two to 22 and you get long, long arms as you see. From this to this, this is what the Shriners did. So, they helped me out a good bit. Um, back to the doctors. Doctors can tell you what you want to hear. Oh, they can tell you, oh, well, your baby's going to be fine. And we can do this, this testing and this research and all da 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 But if the doctor don't know your situation, you have to teach yourself. Sometimes I hate going to the doctor. Because the question is, so what were you born with? 
why was you born with this where does it come from i know i went to the OBGYN my first time and the doctor was like amazed at me he had to run to the, the internet the computer and actually look it up that was like the most funniest thing to me and i'm like i pay i pay a doctor to look at me and i have to teach them I should get some kind of commission. I should get paid. Because I have to teach the doctor. So, it's crazy. You can't always trust doctors because they don't know themselves. If they wasn't taught, then they don't know. So, it's not so much as the doctor's fault. It's, I guess you can say, the books or where they go to school at or you know different stuff I think if you're a doctor you should know about every disease or disorder possible because you know who or what can walk in your office so at this point I'm going to show you some pictures of me as a baby Oh, what? before I do that, I just want to tell you a little bit about my situation as me having TAR. Let's see. TAR has affected me a great deal of my life. However, it has not stopped me from doing what I wanted to do and achieving the goals I wanted to achieve. I've been dancing since I was 12. Before that, I played the violin for three years before that I guess you could say I was a little model I used to model for daycares in school I was just so pretty but I've been dancing since I was 12 I've been on high stepper squads doing independent dance I was with a ballet school for two years I've been with this lady I actually dance with now, I think three or four years, I'm teaching at her studio. Um, I write. I have entered numerous poetry competitions talking about my condition, and I have won awards for it. Um, I drive. I'm going to show you a video on when I drive, when I do it. Um, actually, I done had two cars since I done had my driver's license. Um, I done had numerous boyfriends, everything like that. Um, I just do it all. Nothing stops me. My condition doesn't stop me. However, what a lot of people don't know and... This topic is a little personal for me, so I really haven't told anybody except for the person that I'm with now, my parents, my sister, and a couple of closest friends. I can't have kids. And when I say I can't have kids, everybody be like, oh, well, the doctor's just wrong. No, I don't have a uterus. So, I can't have kids. I was born without a uterus. I don't have a period. A lot of girls and women, per se, when I tell them that, they be like, Girl, you lucky. You, you lucky you don't have to go through all that pain. And I look at them like, you just don't know how bad... I wish to be you. I wish that I can have a normal body. Everybody always say, I do have a normal body. No. I can't have a period. Even though normal women think it's just so yucky and painful and everything. It might be, but just look at my situation. 
because I don't have a period, I can't have kids. And I love kids. I wish I could be a mother. If I could have kids, in my condition, I don't want kids. Why I say that, that raised a lot of people's eyebrows when I say I don't want kids too. The reason because of that, I don't want a child to go through what I went through these past 22 years of my life. You always want the best for your children. And being that I would be a good mother and I want the best for my child, I don't want my child to get talked about to her face and in her face and to go through all the surgeries and all the the genetic complication and why you don't look like this person and why you can't have a period, why you can't have kids and stuff like that. You don't want your you don't want to set your kid up for all that. It's just it's crazy. You always want the best for your child. My aunt, she was like, You're you're wrong. I know you want kids. Your mom didn't give you away. That's correct. My mom didn't give me away. But the thing is, my mom wanted to be a mother. She wanted a child. Even though my real father wasn't there when I was little. And I hate that because I grew up not knowing who I really was or where I really come from. I grew up poor. I didn't really stay with my mom much anyway. It was kind of like a little closed adoption. My aunt slash godmother would take care of me. And until she died, I went and lived with my mom. So the first seven years of my life, I had a mom, but I really didn't consider her as being my mom because she had to provide for me. I understood when I was little because I grew up poor. We had to walk everywhere. I know the only time we had stuff to eat was like rice and weenies. And I noticed all that when I was little. So for her to go to school and to provide for, for me and to make sure I got the proper medical treatment I could get, she had to give me to her sister. And until she died, she got me back. So, I wouldn't want my child to go through everything I went through. Growing up poor, growing up without her father not being there. Growing up the kind of condition you have and you can't do nothing about because God made you this way for a reason. I know in my heart, he made me this way for a reason. I have to keep telling myself that over and over and over but sometimes it gets it gets hard because I look at all these women out here that have kids and they do them so wrong. They have them just to get the welfare check. They have them just to get EBT food stamps. They have them just to just to be having them. And I'm like, God, why did you make me this way? Why did you not allow me to have kids? Why? 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 But then I sit back. Maybe it just wasn't meant for me to be a mother. Maybe it was meant for me to teach children. So I have to tell myself every day, Calissa, it's going to be okay. God made you this way for a reason. Maybe it was to reach people's hearts. Maybe it was to overcome this. Maybe it was to teach people about tar that is out there. Or maybe it was just to be different. I don't know what's the reasons. And I don't ask God what's the reasons. Because... 
he has a way of working with people that you have no idea. He made a way for you and me. So, I'm not going to punish myself anymore for asking God, why did he do this? I just have to accept and live with it and just be happy that I am the way I am.